once again to the study. Today we will explore together the correlation between a fig and annihilation epitomized to this day in the famous oratorical quote, Carthago de Lenda Est. We begin with our man Pliny the Elder in his natural history. Book 15, The Natural History of Fruit Trees. Chapter 20, Historical Anecdotes Connected with the Fig. Pliny writes, The mention by Cato of the variety which bears the name of the African fig strongly recalls to my mind a remarkable fact connected with it and the country from which it takes its name. Burning with a mortal hatred to Carthage, anxious too for the safety of his posterity, and exclaiming at every sitting of the Senate that Carthage must be destroyed, Cato one day brought with him into the Senate house a ripe fig, the produce of that country, exhibiting it to the assembled senators. He said, I ask you, when do you suppose this fruit was plucked from the tree? All being of opinion that it had been put lately gathered. Know then, was his reply, that this fig was plucked at Carthage but the day before yesterday. So near is the enemy to our walls. It was immediately after this occurrence that the Third Punic War commenced, in which Carthage was destroyed. Though Cato had breathed his last the year after this event, in this trait, which are we the most to admire, was it ingenuity and foresight on his part, or was it an accident that was aptly turned to advantage, which too is the most surprising the extraordinary quickness of the passage which must have made, or the bold daring of the man. The thing, however, that is the most astonishing of all, indeed I can conceive nothing more truly marvellous, is the fact that a city thus mighty, the rival of Rome for the sovereignty of the world during a period of one hundred and twenty years, owed its fall at last to an illustration drawn from a single fig. Now Cato had his reasons for this repeated assertion. Rome had but one major opponent in its quest for dominance of the Mediterranean, the city-state of Carthage in North Africa. Twice in the first two Punic Wars, beginning in 264, in 216 BC, Rome had come out ahead after a long series of naval and land battles, but had suffered lasting humiliation at the hands of Hannibal in the Battle of Cannae in 216 BC. Each time Carthage was forced to cede its authority and territory, and to pay reparations as well as agreed to provide military assistance to Rome. However, Carthage seemed always to rebuild its wealth and commercial power over the Mediterranean. When Cato the Elder, a veteran of the Second Punic War, went to Carthage as a member of the senatorial embassy in 152 BC, he was disturbed to see the prosperity of Carthage Despite the loss of silver mines in Iberia to Rome, Carthage had been able to pay the fifty years of reparations to Rome in less than half that time. Cato saw Carthage as a growing threat to Rome, and he set about calling repeatedly for its destruction in the Senate, concluding all of his speeches, no matter what they were about, with this sentiment. It was then that Carthage once again challenged the dominance of Rome, this time attacking the Numidian leader, Masinissa, 
whose incursions into and taking of Carthaginian land was repeatedly defended by the Senate. In 150 BC, Carthage assembled an army to fight Masinissa, breaking the terms of their treaty with Rome. Thus, Cato's sentiment finally won out, and in 146 BC, after demands and failed negotiations, Carthage was invaded, and Scipio Aemilianus, in a naval assault, threw the harbour and into the city of Carthage itself, destroyed the city. For seven days, Roman and Carthaginian forces engaged in a bloody battle, with many casualties on both sides, before Rome emerged victorious. Let's have a closer look at Cato's words. Look at this gerundive, this idea of something needing to be done. So we'll go with the short. Version first. Carthago. Delenda. Est. Est. Of course, our singular matching with Carthago, our subject, third declension, feminine singular in the nominative case. Carthago will go nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative. Carthaginis for the genitive. A, M, A. So third declension ending. We have the nominative, the subject, Carthage. And we have an adjective going with it. This is our gerundive. It is an adjective deriving from a verb, the verb de leo, to destroy. De leo, de lere, de lewi, and de letus are four principal parts of to destroy or annihilate. To make the gerundive, the adjective, we're going to take the infinitive stem from delere, dele, form a gerund, we're going to put an nd on it, and to make a gerundive, an adjective, we're adding our first and second declension adjective endings, us, a, um. Carthage is the noun that's going with this, so we're going to match it, the feminine nominative, a. Delenda. Now, Carthage and destroy go together. We have a needing to be destroyed, a sense of it must happen, and est from sum esse. Carthage must be destroyed. It is needing to be destroyed. Now let's look at one of the longer versions of this quote. Another one that Cato is said to have ended his speeches with. We'll use a lot of colors for this one so that we can go through the accusative, infinitive, indirect speech construction. It starts, Ceterum. Kenseo. You can already see there's some different cases happening here. Let's start and take it apart a bit by bit to see the eloquence of Cato's. Furthermore, in addition, 
addition to everything I have just said. the Latin. 
last of the Phoenician race sold into slavery, the fall of a once great civilization, a significance needing to be remembered.